everybody, Christian Gress here. So I've yet to do a cleaning video of any sort on any firearm. So uh, I figured what better time than now, uh, you know, hunting season's over. Uh, I had a number of my rifles out for hunting, did a good bit of shooting, uh, including, including this guy right here. So this is my little eight and a half inch, 300 blackout. And uh, you know, I always run this thing suppressed and as most folks know, uh, if you run, you know, suppressed for long periods of time, you know, you get a lot of buildup in the uh, chamber and back where the uh, receiver is and that sort of thing. So um, anyways, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get to cleaning. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So what we got here is I got a cleaning mat down. Actually, my daughter just got this for me for Christmas. So, so that was pretty cool. Uh, let me get a little bit more light on the subject. And uh, you know, I got a chamber brush, cha chamber swab. Uh, I got a bore brush. I got a jag. All right, jags are good for pushing patches down. I got a <laughs> Magpul plastic bullet for pulling the take down pins apart. I got myself a brush. I also have a, a chamber cleaning kit from uh, Dewey. All right, and I like the Dewey one piece uh, coated rods. I've been using them for years. Uh, a bunch of patches and good old trusty hops number nine. Okay. And then uh, I have a oil bottle and this has a, a slip 2000 in it. So, all right, first things first, what I like to do uh, is separate separate the upper from the lower <clears throat> which is not a huge deal I always push those pins back in because if you happen to drop your little receiver and it lands on one of those pins you, you risk a chance of breaking uh, the re your receiver on the front at least so set that inside so we got the uh, upper assembly Pull your bolt assembly out. Okay, pull your charging handle out. And uh, there's a couple ways of going about doing this. Uh, I mean, you, you can see here that I have all sorts of stuff uh, in the uh, receiver there. Uh, CLP works good or gun scrubber if you want to just spray the receiver down. I don't go too crazy with my cleaning um, for the most part. so. But uh, I do happen to have some of that handy. Break free CLP. Idea here is you can soak this stuff down a little bit. It'll loosen up stuff. Of course, you want to have plenty of rags handy. Get my bolt soaking a little bit. All right. And uh, yeah, so. First thing I like to do uh, after I get everything apart like it is, is uh, go ahead and start trying to clean the bore out. So that, that seems to take the longest. Um, so I'm gonna start off with a uh, cleaning brush here. And like I said, I'm just trying to knock off some of the loose stuff and then I'll follow up with some, some fine cleaning. So I've let this sit just a little bit and in the meantime, I can go ahead and start working on my bolt carrier group. My hands are all slippery. I got a magnetic tray, works really good for you know, throwing your small parts in. This is a, actually a nickel boron coated uh, bolt carrier group I got from AIM Surpa, Surplus years ago when I first built this 300 Blackout. And it's uh, selling pretty dang good, so no complaints there. All right. So, yeah, that stuff's pretty, pretty dirty looking. I'll hose it down with a little bit of CLP. Just let it kind of sit there. And while that's soaking here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the hops number nine. 
I usually use an uh, MTM case guard uh, rest for my cleaning, but I wanted to kind of get on video and it's a little hard to get that big thing up here and get it all on camera. So. Let that stuff sit in there and soak for a little while. In the meantime, I got a chamber cleaner. So I don't know if anybody's noticing a little bit of a trend here, but my goal is to kind of just loosen everything up initially and let it sit for a little bit. So I'll try to fast forward through that. Uh, so I won't make this video too long. Oh yeah, if y'all could see what I see. It's uh, pretty dang dirty in there. And the other thing you want to do is can get in there with a brush. Your receiver's got a lot of crap caked up in it. You know, get in there with a brush and loosen that stuff up so needless to say uh, cleaning an AR especially a suppressed one like this is uh, it's quite a dirty job so I don't clean my my firearms every time I shoot them I, I normally wait until there's a good time this thing I've shot matter of fact I had, don't think I cleaned it since last season to be honest with you now that I think about it I think I hadn't I, last season I, I shot it uh, shot some deer and spent a good bit of time at the range. I didn't clean it and then I even went to visit Mr. Um, Grills and Guns and uh, did some shooting with him and hadn't cleaned it and then I hunted with it this year and didn't clean it so it's definitely due. It's got I don't, who knows how many rounds through it. So it's got everything soaking up there. You can get down in there with some rags or paper towels, whatever you got. Start getting all the gunk out of there. Folks that have those ultrasonic cleaners, um, and those are pretty good for cleaning the small parts. I've yet to get one. I thought about it, but uh, I don't mind cleaning things the old fashioned way, I guess. I guess if you had one of those, it'd make life a little easier. Uh, Q-tips are good for getting down in these tight areas. So like I said, spraying that stuff down, letting it soak for a little while, um, really helps to break up the, the big stuff. And then you can get down in there with brush and rags and get that stuff out. So, okay. See how dirty that is. It's all sorts of stuff that came out of there. Alright, so let my barrel sit for a little while. It was a 300 blackout, so 30 caliber jag is what you need. A lot of people got those slotted jags, and I guess that's fine as well, but I like these because they're fitted to the bore, and they really push that, that cleaning patch up against, the, up against the sides of the bore. First things first. And you always want to start from the chamber end when you run uh, if possible, if it's an AR type rifle or a bolt gun or something where you can get in from the rear, um, definitely, uh, you know, start from the chamber in, push that sucker through, and you can see pretty readily there all the stuff that came out. And the patches, uh, don't run them back through the same way. Uh, if you want to save your patches or reuse them you can flip them over sometimes but if they're really nasty i, I don't recommend it because what happens is you're going to push you're going to push crap that you just pushed out of your bore back in there so you're better off you know patches are cheap this one came out quite a bit cleaner already so this one i might consider reusing but like i said patches are cheap so we're just gonna rolled that all right so and for me i'm um, gonna keep using some hops number nine and the idea here is just you're gonna keep pushing the patches through with the hops number nine 
or whatever bore solvent you're using and you're gonna push those through until you start seeing clean patches come out so you can see it's starting to come out fairly clean so I'll probably push another one through with the hops number nine on there and then I'll push some clean ones through I think about hops number nine it actually smells halfway decent unlike a lot of stuff I also have for really bad fouled barrels I have sweet 762 but that stuff you need like a ventilation system to clean with that stuff it's uh it'll choke you out look how clean that's coming out I think the little bit on here is probably just on the muzzle device so I might even flip that one over because it's not too bad all right so for before I get too crazy with that you know I got a chamber in here that's kind of dirty too so uh, you know I use the brush and I'm gonna swap over from the brush and I'm gonna go to these little cotton swab things that get down in the groove put it in here and hopefully y'all can see that it's got a guide to keep you centered in the receiver and just kind of twist that thing around it it's gonna mop up where your bolt lugs lock into your barrel extension chambers looking pretty darn good so okay I think I'm about done with the hops for now I'll break it back out if I need it um, but now what I'd like to do is, you know, I, I've ran this hops down the uh, bore, I've ran the hops in the chamber and in the receiver. Uh, you know, I want to push through some patches that just have some oil on there. So, go back to your jag again. And just put some oil on there. You can see it's coming through fairly clean um, I know there's gonna be some folks that are watching this that are thinking man, I just I want my stuff spick and span as clean as I can get it and I'll be one to tell you that it's dang near impossible to get it just like it was brand new but you're welcome to try I don't spend that much time on it I just Make sure I get the fouling out of the, the bore. I mean, you see how clean that's already coming out. So I'll probably just flip this patch over and reuse it. That's pretty dang good if you ask me. So camera there. Bore is nice and clean. Uh, chamber's clean. Um, I am, however, going to do one last thing with the uh, chamber uh, I do have this this chamber mop and I like to put just a little bit of oil on that you don't have to put a lot um, but just a little bit of oil on that chamber chamber mop just to kind of coat the surface it don't have to be like I said nothing crazy and this slip 2000 I've been using for a long time um, so Pretty much my go-to oil a lot of other oils out there and stuff I mean I think as long as you're using a good quality one it doesn't really matter and for the most part I would say that the upper assembly um, is about as far as I'm gonna go with it honestly um, got a lot of oil all over it uh, but the receivers nice and clean chambers nice and clean Pretty much mission accomplished as far as that. I mean, you can always get down in the nooks and crannies and all the little, you know, like I said, some people are probably going to watch this and be like, well, man, I, you know, I keep cleaning until I get everything off of there. Well, that's all fine and good if you want to spend your time doing that, but it's really not necessary. I mean, the first time you shoot a couple shots, all those little nooks and crannies are just going to get stuff back in it. So for me, I mean, this is a working, working rifle. Um, you know, I, I shoot it a lot. I hunt with it. And uh, it takes a lot more than some carbon buildup and some little nooks and crannies to cause this thing not to work. So I don't worry too much about it. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever had a failure with this this rifle, ever. So, all right. So I'm gonna set this over to the side, or kind of the side, anyways. Now we got a 
couple things here. Um, and we got a charging handle, so nice Bravo Company charging handle, and that honestly, uh, a lot of times I'll use patches and stuff to clean stuff. Not just the barrel. So that works pretty good. Nice cloth. That guy's done. Took two seconds to do. Bolt care. Alright, so this thing's been soaking. And this nickel boron is really slick stuff. So for the most part, you know, you just use a brush or something after soaking it for a little while and you can get that stuff out. Get that stuff off. Now down inside of here, I did I have a bolt scraper somewhere, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, saw a video recently. Real Avid has a pretty nice bolt cleaning tool I may pick up. Yeah, this nickel boron, you know, it's uh, looks all pretty when you first get it, but once you get a lot of rounds through it, it discolors, and you can see it's got some splotchiness on there, but. Yeah, that's just the nature of, of this coating. Um, yeah, I've never had any problems with this bolt carrier group, and uh, I like function over looks. So, for me, as long as it's working, I don't really care. So, I'll set that guy to the side, and then got the uh, bolt assembly, and I'm not going to go crazy on this. Like I said, I got a, got a bolt scraper, uh, I think from Otis somewhere. But there's not a ton of carbon built up on this thing. It's dirty. But rings in there for sealing it up. And there's a test you do when you're done with cleaning these things. All right, so I think the bolt's pretty good. Cam, clean that up. Yeah, soak this stuff long enough. The brush normally takes any crap off for the most part. And the fire pin. I'm just going to use my rag here. And the cutter pin, last but not least. So before I assemble everything, uh, you know, you kind of look down in your where your trigger is and um, you know if it looks real bad I will blow that out um, but honestly it looks pretty good it's uh, not too dirty um, if you feel so inclined you know we'll put a dab of oil on your springs hammer or it hooks bolt carrier assembly so make sure when you put the bolt back on that the extractor is facing the right way uh, put your cam in, okay, rotate that thing, pull your bolt out, put your fire pin in, put your cotter pin in, and the test for these guys to check the, the rings to make sure they're good is basically if you stand that thing up, you know, under the weight of the bolt itself, it should not collapse. So that's a good test to check the rings on there. I've had them fail after a uh, few thousand rounds. Um, they get weak. So I did not pull the extractor off or the ejector. The ejector is quite a, quite a treat to pull off. But the extractor is not bad, but I just left it in there for now. Um, alrighty. And your lube of choice. Uh, there's a debate on grease or oils or whatever. Um, you know, it's kind of kind of a preference thing. Um, just make sure you get the spots that come in contact with stuff. Okay. And there, my charging handle's in. As far as the bolt's concerned, 
You got the ray, the uh, contact points or bearing surfaces there. Oh, it's good to put a little bit there, and like I said you can use grease on there if you want. Um, I use this rifle in cold conditions. Grease sometimes is is not good. You can put a little bit on your your lugs if you want. Um, especially with a new rifle, I, I tend to over over oil my stuff. All right. Snap that bad boy in, and then. Uh, sure everything works right. and then safety works all that good stuff so all right there you have it just a quick uh, down and dirty how you can clean an AR uh, like I said uh, there's probably a gazillion different thoughts on that uh, my thought is uh, clean it you know when when you're bored or you want something to do it's pretty therapeutic for me um, Clean it if it's you're having malfunctions and you're troubleshooting, or if you know um, if it's your home defense or duty rifle, uh, you might want to keep it a little bit more clean. But always after you clean, function test these things, especially if it's a duty rifle or a home defense rifle, um, because you know you take all the stuff apart to clean it, and you can do some function drive function tests here, but. You really want to take it to the range and run a few rounds through it, make sure everything's good. Just my my thoughts on that. If it's a hunting rifle or something, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, take it to the range for hunt season, test it then. But if it's something your your life's dependent on, um, after you clean something like this, good idea to run at least a few rounds through it. Um, just my opinion. So, all right, everybody, that about wraps it up for this. Uh, cleaning video hopefully it's not too long and uh, appreciate everybody watching and subscribing and I will catch y'all in the next video y'all take it easy